I need you to look carefully at this image. Hmm, what do you see? What is the story that is telling you? I believe that every one of you guys has his own interpretation for this image, but let me tell you what's mine. When I created this visual, I was thinking about a man who found like a lost castle in a very remote destination. And at the same time, I wanted to convey like relaxing, peaceful vibes. I did this by using the sunset rays and this beautiful sunset color. So, in today's video, I will walk you guys through the process of creating this visual. It's gonna be like a speed art with me commenting in what I did in this visual. But if you want the full length tutorial along with the PSD file, the stock images used, the brushes used, you will find all this in the link in the description. And for now, let's start our journey. So guys, let's jump straight into Photoshop and see how did I create this visual. As I'm always saying, I love to start with putting images together at first and then correcting the lightness and the colors and all the other stuff. So I started with this dramatic sky and then went to this mountain. For this mountain, I like to choose images that already has the same effect that I want in my visual. For example, this image of the mountain looks very far away and it has the atmosphere effect embedded on it already. So I don't have to create the atmosphere effect anymore. So I put this one and duplicate it to the other side and I made sure to not look as it is a duplicate, okay? That's a very important tip. Next, I found this castle or palace and cut it with the pen tool because it's a main focal point in our visual, so it needs to be sharp. And then I selected these edges with a tree brush because whenever I find something that is very hard to select like these edges of the trees I simply go to a tree brush or any plants brush that will make the job done perfectly because I cannot select it with any other method and here I duplicated the castle image to create a very big one so I duplicated more than one time and I cut some parts from the right and some parts to be put in the top, you know, and I did so because I want the castle to be like gigantic castle. That's why I wanted to have a lot of details. Okay, so here I'm trying to select this part, the bridge to be put uh, and to be blended with this castle and of course I took a lot of time to find the proper images and sometimes um, I do a lot of effort and after all this effort I just tell myself that this image sucks it cannot be used so I went to another image and that's normal guys what you are seeing right here is only the final result but of course there are a lot of steps hidden that uh, takes a lot of time simply okay so I duplicated this bridge image and expanded it what I liked about this bridge image is that it has already the reflection of this building so I don't have to create another reflection for the castle this reflection will be okay for me very nice and for now i'm just trying to cut these rocks using uh, some channels that's uh, that will be put in the foreground as you know if you want to create an image that has depth you know some elements that are close to the camera and others are very far away from the camera and others are in the middle of the scene so you need to create this depth and here I um, cut this image of this man using the channels the final step is to put, take these images of the trees to be put in the foreground 
and I used the minimum filter to remove these fringes, white fringes and I put it right here okay, I put one at the left, another one to the right and everything looks nice already so at this step everything is good I put everything in its possession and now it's time to adjust the lightness values the saturation the colors and then paint the light these are the four steps that I always do you know so firstly I started with a solid color with 50 hundred percent gray and put uh, it into saturation blend mode to remove the color and saturation out of the equation I can only see the values right now okay and then I use curves to adjust the lightness values and the golden rule here is the farther you go in distance the less contrasty the elements should and the brighter the elements should okay so these four mountains should be uh, not contrasty at all you cannot see its details and it has a lot of atmospheric effect due to the atmosphere the dust in the air okay and the closer the elements are from the camera the sharper and the more contrasty they should by this by doing this you are creating depths into your visuals so this was the first step and the second step was adjusting the saturation so now I am looking at each element separately and I'm trying to maybe decrease the saturation or maybe shift the colors a little bit uh, so for example here I'm shifting the colors from cyanish green uh, of these plants to somehow orangey magenta green okay so as you can see right now I'm just shifting the colors and desaturating this green because it is very saturated green because right now my main objective is to like flatten the image all the images should have the same tone of saturation and color and then we can add our colors okay so after finishing the saturation part I am now trying to figure out and analyze the image and see what are the main light sources into our scene so for here we have two sources of light we have the blue light that is coming out of the sky and it will be ambient light it will not be sharp and the second light source is the sun and the sun uh, color will be orange and it will be very sharp and you can see it okay so I started to correct the colors by putting the bluish tone into every object which is the color of the ambient light source which is the sky and then I will start to paint the orange color so right now I'm just picking every object and trying to make its color uh, bluish color okay and sometimes I, I forgot to adjust some elements you know this is not like a one-shot process this order by which I am creating this visual is not perfect you know sometimes after uh, adjusting the values I get back to saturation and adjust it again and then adjust the colors and then get back to the values so it's back and forth process it's not a one-way process okay so right now I'm adjusting the colors of each element and some people like to start element by element uh, you know they some people just start with every element and make it perfectly blended and then go to the other element so for example here uh, I know some friends that are making the castle and correcting its color correcting its values uh, painting the uh, lightness and then go to the uh, other elements like this bridge and then go to the man and they are finishing everything 
uh, from the first time. But for me, I like to walk in the visual like in sequences. I like to start with putting images, adjusting the bigger picture uh, because I want to see how it looks at the end and then put the details. Okay, now let's care about the sunlight. So I picked this sun overlay and then started to paint some orangey haze effect around the sun and applying the orange color into some of this, the clouds because this gives it realism, of course. If you have a sunset scene, you should have some orangey clouds. And here something is called light leak, which is when you have like something very bright, like the sun behind a, a mountain, then you will see some leak of the lights ca coming into this area. And then I started to paint the light softly and gently into each element. I started with these mountains at the background and here I created, I, I put some hazing effect using solid color and screen blending mode. This is the atmosphere effect. That's what I was telling you about. It's the dust particles in the air and I'm just lighting them, okay? And here I'm painting with a light beam brush to create like this light beam effect, okay? Because I want to create a beam of light that is hitting this castle. And of course we should paint light at every object, any other object, okay? At this time, uh, it depends on your artistic taste. So I'm here putting some hazing effect in this area above the water because I want to split this guy from the bridge behind him. Okay, I want to create contrast, very bright background and then the man himself will be dark and this will serve the story itself, okay. Here I'm painting some shadows because of course light will not pass through these areas and then painted some lights behind this man, okay? By doing this, I'm telling you as a viewer for the image, I'm telling you to just look at this guy. You cannot neglect him because I'm kinda pointing on him. And then painting some reflections into the water using some water reflection brushes. Okay. And here I'm just creating shadow layer for this bridge because he is in the opposite side of the light. And now it's time to paint the light and shadow for the castle. The castle image itself is kind of flat. So I started to paint shadows manually using a very um, textured brush. I am just darkening some areas that is not hit by the light. This needs some painting skills. I'm not asking you to be like a professional uh, painter but if you are into photo manipulation, of course, of course, you should try uh, watching some digital painting classes or tutorials and you should paint your own uh, designs, okay? Even if it's not perfect, you can just paint light into a sphere, then into a cube and then draw a, a sphere that is touching a cube and try to paint the light, how it interacts with different textures, you know, uh, this will help you. Of course, that is what helped me at least. Okay, so for now I created the highlights and if you want to know how to create perfect highlights, I've created a full video for this, you can find it in the description. 
I am explaining my process, analyzing the surfaces on which you can paint highlights with what texture and all this stuff, okay? And I'm trying here to create like dynamic lightings because I don't want the light to be like flat with one intensity throughout the castle. I want it to be like different. And here I'm painting some rim lights on this guy, although it may be not super realistic to paint highlights as intense as I'm painting them right now, but if it doesn't bother my eye, then it's okay. And I'm doing this highlights uh, very intensively as you can see right now because I want to point your eyes towards this guy. You should look here because he is a focal point. So I'm now kinda try to engineer the visual, try to guide the eye of the audience uh, to, to look at whatever I want them to look and this of course helps uh, when creating visual stories through images like this okay here I'm painting some soft light into the rocks and finally I'm painting some um, lights into the trees and the intensity of light depends on the possession and the material of each object so for example if I'm painting light into a very reflective material like a metal for example uh, it will be very shiny the reflections of light will be very shiny but if you are painting lights into a rock surface it will not uh, be as shiny as the metal so it depends on the material itself and now I'm creating like some hazing effect here and there and um, trying to adjust everything okay so at this at this time I prefer to go away uh, have a break and get back to the visual this will show you the mistakes that you are making so for now I'm using a lens flare brush and it's a really good brush to create glow effects uh, and I'm using it now to create like a very reflective light from coming from the castle okay and now we are in the final stages where I'm looking at the visual m uh, adjusting some parts some lights and th this cannot be ended guys believe me I can always adjust uh, the, the visual you know <clears throat> I will always find mistakes so it can take forever for me to finish it but uh, at some time I said to I say to myself that's enough everything is good I can um, publish it right now okay <laughs> and if I came the next day of course I will find other mistakes so it, this process will never end and uh, of course I know that some of you guys know what I'm meaning here so here I'm trying to paint some rim lights into the bridge and adding some final lens flares uh, to the scene I'm trying to make it subtle and some birds here and there to give us a sense of flow and rhythm and finally putting the final effects and the final color grading using camera roll filter and that's it guys here is before and here is after all right guys that was it for today i hope you like it and most importantly enjoyed it and as mentioned if you want the full length tutorial you will find it in the description and if you want another breakdown like this you can find it in this video Peace.